Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. What is up? Happy Friday. Let's dig into some questions. Hope everyone is doing great. First question of the day here. Lakshmi writes in, my husband has AS and wanted to know if food intake induce <clears throat> tamarind and citric acid content foods. Um, that's a good question. Regarding getting that nuanced, I wouldn't even go there first. I would really just focus on removing autoimmune foods first. And is AS completely curable with proper autoimmune diet? And there's other components besides just an autoimmune diet. Uh, Klebsiella pneumoniae or Klebsiella is an important bacteria that has a, a major um, ankylosing spondylitis component. So I'd look in deeper at the gut and see what other issues are at bay. Paula Hearn writes in, is your new probioflora better than the last one? Does it contain phage? It does not contain phages. It's about 11 to 12 different strains of uh, beneficial flora and higher potency. It also has a little bit more prebiotic in there. So you just kind of exchange a couple things out, but it's still very effective. It's still one of the best ones in the market. Uh, K Gupta, what do you think of the unfortified nutritional yeast as a source of B vitamins? I think it can be helpful. I mean, if you're not taking B vitamins in a good B vitamin complex or a good multi, that can be a good option for you. If you're taking a good multi, then it's probably not necessary. Or if you're taking a good B vitamin complex, not necessary. Uh, Paul writes in, how to quit smoking if you've been a long-term smoker for 30 years? Cold turkey is difficult. Yeah, so I mean, a couple of ways you could do it. Um, smoking, typically the nicotine in there, it really increases dopamine. So the big thing is I would look at providing dopamine support. That would help fill in the gaps of that, you know, that, that addiction component that you have with the cigarettes. That's really stimulating dopamine. So I'd really work on supporting dopamine levels. And then tapering off from there, but getting the dopamine dialed in. And then I may switch over to a vape in the meantime, because a lot of the major harmful effects of the smoking is just going to be the incineration, right? The incineration is going to create heterocyclic amines and polyaromatic hydrocarbons. These things are carcinogenic. So if you can at least cut the incineration out, that's going to decrease a lot of the, um, the, the nasty metabolic effects. So increase dopamine, right? My line, we use like tyrosine or like dopa replete plus. We use macuna, those kind of things. And then um, switch over to uh, a nicotine based vape and then drop off from there. Hope that helps. Akimo writes in Do you have to, do you have to take all six category supplements to remove any food sensitivities and improve digestion? Well, you want to remove the bad foods, that's for sure. Uh, number two, you want to make sure you can digest the better foods that you're now eating enzymes, acids, bile salts, want to make sure your stools are looking good. You have good motility. You're passing 12 inches of stool a day. Um, your stools are sinking. There's no undigested food particles in there. And if there's a lot of gut inflammation, we want to calm down the inflammation. And we also want to get rid of infections and really support beneficial flora. So yeah, you really have to work on those, at least those first four steps for sure. Very important. Let me see here. Um, next step here. Dennis writes in, how do carnivores such as jaguars survive without eating vegetables? Well, I mean, they're, they're carnivores. That's how they're designed, right? That's why they have the teeth that they have. They have a much shorter intestinal tract. More, the more carnivore you know, biologically you are, the shorter the intestinal tract you have. Um, the more herbivore-ish you become, the longer the intestinal tract. Um, you have the extreme example of like cows that have like, I think five different stomachs, right? Five different chambers and they have to eat all day long. And then a lot of the fats that they get in are going to be from the fermentation of the grass. So they can actually make butyric acid, the same fat and butter through the fermentation of the grass in their stomach. So people are like, oh, well, you know, animals, they don't eat, you know, um, they don't, they're, they're, they're um, herbivores, right? Well, they actually can make that same fat, the, the primary ingredient of butter in their gut with fermentation. And then humans are kind of in the middle, right? Humans are kind of in the middle. So I think it's like carnivores are more like on a 10 foot intestinal track. Um, we're like 30 feet ish. And then I think herbivores go much longer, 60 feet plus. Um, Akimo writes in, what is infection killing? Why is infection killing so stressful on the adrenals? Um, infection killing is stressful because there's a lot of biotoxins that are released. And if you don't have the ability to flush it out lymphatically, your detoxification system will react to it too. So your detoxification system has to upregulate to flush it out. And then your lymphatic system, which is kind of like the intermediary between the tissues and the blood, has to flush it out as well, and it can get stagnant. So those are the big major systems you have to work on there. All right, and then uh, Colin writes in, what's your opinion on CBD oil? Worth the hype, good for sleep, focus. What do you say 
Uh, there are better options. I think CBD oil is great. Depends what you're using it for. I think it's great for R and R relaxation. I think it's great for pain, especially topically. I think it can be really helpful for um, for mood related issues too. It can be great for seizures. There's a lot of good benefits for it. It doesn't have the psychoactive properties that THC does, so you can you could use it um, during the day or use it at night, and not have any hangover or low motivation, um, slower motor refluxes that you would see with like THC. Hey Spivey, hope all is well. Oliver writes in, is it important to get um, herbs or spices organic, even though we use such small amounts? I think it's helpful. I mean, if you can add curcumin or or like I do a lot of cinnamon on my green apples at night or healthy sea salt, I think is obviously great. You can obviously take some of these things like curcumin at a higher dose for you know inflammation reduction. But yeah, I think there's a lot of beneficial benefits of um, herbs and spices. Dr. David Jockers talks a lot about that. Nicole writes in, uh, best foods for breastfeeding. So if you look at breastfeeding or breast milk consistency, it's about 50% fat. So you really want lots of good, healthy fats. And you may want some a little bit of starch in there too, squash, sweet potato, those kind of things uh, may be beneficial as well, especially if there's not insulin resistance going on. Um, so yeah, really make sure you get enough healthy fats. And then you may want to look at adding a little bit of starch in there too. A wonderful girl writes in, I just lost it there. Dr. J, uh, how do you spell the name of the person that is helping with Parkinson's? Uh, yeah, Marty Hins, H-I-N-Z. He's uh, up in Minnesota. I think his website's neuroscience.com. Um, Kim Reese writes, have you heard of ASEA? I think that's like a multi-level marketing product. I need more information. Grace writes in, hey, Grace, hit out to Jay. What's an appropriate amount of flatulence? Uh, uh, erectation. So regarding flatulence, I mean... There should be maybe a little bit of flatulence during the day and ideally just air. If, if there starts to get to be a foul odor, that tells me that there's some methane that's coming out. So it really just depends. Um, a small amount is, is reasonable. Um, how much? I, I wouldn't be able to quantify that per se. Um, but let's say, let's say a handful of episodes a day may be normal without any um, methane smell ideally. Uh, if you experience the slightest bit of flatulence, does it mean digestion is impaired? It just depends. Um, if you're noticing an association with certain foods or higher FODMAP foods, that could be an issue. Obviously, certain foods like beans that have a notorious um, you know, reputation for that, partly because there's a lot of compounds in there that require a lot of enzymes to break it down. Hence, products like Beano, which are enzyme-driven products to be able to break it down. So if you're having a hard time breaking something down and it's sitting in your gut and fermenting, yeah, there's a good chance that that could be the problem. And again, it like inability to break things down in the stomach, right? It's going to cause burping, like gas in the stomach, burping, inability to break down things, and or just the, a lot of fermentation in the intestines onward is going to go out the other end, flatulence. Uh, Nick writes, yeah, no coffee enemas remove toxins from the liver, but some people say they remove lots of good minerals from our bodies as well. How does that happen in short? Well, yeah, basically a lot of the minerals get reabsorbed in the colon. So if you're putting something up there, right, coffee up there, and then you're laying in the fetal position, it hits your gallbladder, it hits your liver, it causes the liver to increase glutathione, dump a whole bunch of toxins out, and then you get back up 15 minutes later and it comes out. Yeah, you may remove some of those minerals prematurely before the colon may have had a chance to reabsorb them. That's very possible. That's why you'd really want to make sure that you are hydrating with, you know, enriched mineral water, he healthy mineral water, and maybe even using extra minerals throughout the day to compensate for that. So yeah, I think it's really important that you know that you may be losing minerals and you go through extra efforts to get extra minerals back in. Robert writes in, um, Dr. J, the GI Restore is really helping me. Excellent. Keep it up. Really good to hear. Yeah, you had a lot of information, inflammation, Robert. So cooling down that inflammation will definitely be helpful for you, along with making these diet changes. All right, great. Uh, wonderful girl, said, how to reduce considerable belly fat for men that are slim? Well, first thing is, a lot of times if you're a man and you're slim and you have belly fat, it's either going to be a cortisol thing going on or an insulin-resistant thing. Sometimes people that are like... Um, for an, an ectomorph, which are like taller, skinnier guys that have the belly fat, there can still be some insulin resistance or cortisol surges that are causing that. So you want to adjust the insulin resistance or the cortisol, depending on what the issue is. Uh, Robert writes in, can I take more than the recommended dose of two times a day? If you're seeing a benefit, I'm fine with you going a little bit higher. That's totally okay. All right. RSBN. 
autoimmune diet for PMR. I'm not sure what PMR stands for, leaky gut and IBS. So many diets conflict. What can and can't? What can I eat? Uh, what's PMR? But regarding um, leaky gut or IBS, yeah. So with leaky gut, we want to cut out the most inflammatory foods. That's where paleo is a great starting point. That's no grains, that's no grains, legumes, or dairy. Maybe a little bit of butter is okay. Autoimmune is the next step up where we're cutting out nuts, seeds, nightshades, and eggs. And then depending on that, we want to make sure we can digest it and break it down. So we may get it through extra extremes where we make sure everything's cooked. We avoid raw. We may also cut out salicylates or phenols. We may make sure foods are peeled or mashed or cut out fermentable carbohydrates or histamine. So it just depends. There's lots of different directions we can go in. And I really make those recommendations individually at the patient level, depending on what, what's going on symptomatically. Uh, Elvis writes in, Dr. J, if I have diabetes and I decide to consume a fruit raw, will that heal diabetes? Well, if you have diabetes, personally, I would do no fruit until we have your blood sugar under control. So it'd be meat, lots of fat, and then non-starchy vegetables. And then I would not do any fruit or any starchy carbs until we have your blood sugar under control. And then we would dose in very low sugar, um, carbohydrates like um, berries or green apple, and we would dose it. We'd monitor your blood sugar. We would do what's called a functional glucose tolerance, which is designed to assess how your body handles blood sugar fasting one, two, and three hours after a meal. So it really is going to be um, patient driven and no carbohydrate outside of non starchy veg until we get things under control. Dusty writes in, is it just the caffeine in the coffee that hurts your stomach? I'm pretty sure I have a leaky gut. What, what can cause leaky gut? Um, I don't think it's the caffeine. I think it's the acidity of the coffee that may be causing it, the abrasiveness of the coffee. So if that's the case, you may want to just put fat in the coffee. That can help kind of soothe it and calm it a bit. Or there's some other coffees that have some mushroom extracts in it that make it more alkalinized. That's an option too. Or just avoid coffee and do a tea substitute in the meantime until your gut gets better. But you want to go to the six R's to get the gut dialed in. Uh, low heat writes in, Doc, what do you? What are the causes of tinnitus, lymph node swelling in the neck, headaches, after treatment with immunobiologics, MRI brain is clear, but ultrasound neck shows swollen lymphs. So the question is, why are you on immunosuppressants? That, that tell, that's, begs the question, is there an autoimmune condition? Why are you suppressing your immune system? Uh, number two, the lymph nodes are going to be stressed or congested because there's macrophages and things that are gobbling up some type of infectious bacterial debris so it doesn't go into general circulation. So you do want to work on supporting the lymph and supporting wherever this dead crud that's coming into your body, um, support the killing of it and the eradication and the expelling of it. And so you want to get to the root cause of, of why these lymph, why the lymphs are swollen and support it. Ginger tea is a great option to help with that. All right, excellent. Um, let me keep on rolling. So many questions are coming in. Uh, Jack JMC writes in, is spicy food, um, eating a lot of spicy food bad for you? Well, a lot of spicy food is very high in, in, in capsum. I think it's capsum. That's the active ingredient, like in a lot of the spices and it's very high in vitamin A. So as long as you can tolerate it and it's not causing any tummy ache issues, you don't have an active ulcer. I don't have a problem with it. A lot of good nutrients, vitamin A is in it. Low heat writes in, uh, tips for bouncing back to normal. Oh, way too broad of a question. Any of my podcasts will, will help you there. Uh, enjoy life journey. Ringing in my left ear started April 2018. Comes and goes. Head thyroid tested okay. Pressure to the left side of the ear makes ringing increase. Got to get to the root cause of it. Um, Got to work on the diet. Got to look at infections. Got to look at all of those things first. Very broad. A lot of tinnitus can be autoimmune. There can be food connections. There can be infection connections with it. Hey, you're welcome, wonderful girl. Thank you. Jack JMC writes in, why did you change the GI Restore ingredients? Uh, I just have a lot of patients that are super sensitive, so I wanted to make it simpler, less ingredients, more therapeutic with the ones that were there, so higher doses with the aloe and the DGL and the uh, glutamine, um, but less ingredients, um, decreased sensitivity. Augie writes in, Dr. Marty Hens is awesome, great. Ali Mo writes in, okay, Kitty writes in, Dr. J, best killing herbs for viruses like herpes 2 and toxoplasmosis. So best killing herbs for viruses, well, silver, not really an herb. Silver is excellent. I have a product called GI Clear 3, which is great. 
Um, next, you can do Mono Lauren. High dose Mono Lauren is an extract from coconut, which is excellent, has antiviral properties. You can do higher dose Cat's Claw or Cemento, which is excellent for viruses. You can do Rishi, Rishi, which is really good for viruses as well. Yeah, that should give you a couple of first steps. Higher dose berberines along with the cat's claw is excellent too. How many times can I take GI Restore in a day? I would do it three times a day. I think one before each meal, if that helps, that's great. Do you think high dose vitamin C is overrated? I think vitamin C has a lot of good benefits. I, I don't have a problem with it. Just make sure you're taking it with some good bioflavonoids. Make sure it's not a cheap vitamin C. Yeah, you're welcome, Grace. Uh, Nick writes in, thanks for the informative reply. You're welcome. Okay, Sam Lee writes in, the moment my stomach is empty, it starts to growl like crazy. What could be the reason? Well, that's bor borborygmy. So that's just, it's normal to have a little bit of growling in your stomach if you get overly hungry. That may be within normal variation. It just depends. Ginger is also very soothing on your stomach as well. So soothing things like ginger can be great. Can coffee cause leaky gut? If, you have, if you're severely allergic to it, I would say it's anything that you're severely allergic to can open up those tight junctions. Uh, it would just depend. Um, but as long as you can tolerate it, I'm okay with it. Again, make sure it's organic because a lot of people can react to the pesticides and the other chemicals that could be in the coffee beans. So just be careful that higher quality is better. All right, good. Um, yeah, polymyalgia rheumatica. Yeah, so that's autoimmune. Same thing before regarding the autoimmune diet question. Barbara writes in one of uh, uh, once a hormones helping. Okay, all right. Once on hormones helping adaptogens, will I need to continuously take? Okay, so I just I can't answer that question. It's just the English is too broken on that. Sorry, Akimo. Uh, why am I currently intolerant bloating psoriasis to para or silver? How would I increase my tolerance to them? Why would another month of GI clear one, four, and five? Um, okay. Guys, if you're going to write questions, try to write good English so I don't have to get on my thinking cap here. So I think what you're saying is um, if I'm intolerant, if I'm having reactions to the herbs, why would I want to go longer with it? So number one, if you're having a reaction to the herb, it's probably more you're having a reaction to what's being killed by the herbs. So make sure you taper any herbs you're doing up slowly, number one. And then number two, um, you may need longer. Some people need two or three rounds of killing. It just depends on um, what what's going on in the gut. You may need to kill a lot more. Yeah, if people have questions. Try to ask on YouTube, Facebook. I have it on my my phone, and it's just it's really hard to read from across the room. Um, Low heat writes in. Thanks, Doc, for restoring lymph size and removing infections in head and neck. Uh, what could be used instead of antibiotics? So ginger tea is excellent. Ginger is wonderful for that. Um, and then regarding that, there's other things that you can do like higher dose berberines. Those kind of things are excellent. Cat's claw is excellent. Supporting the immune system with medicinal mushrooms like reishi is excellent too. Um, Paul writes in, is it okay to book a last minute appointment with you a couple hours prior to time? Yeah, as long as you can get in, you can always jump in. That's fine. Um, have you heard of burnt out Crohn's? Burnt out. I haven't heard of that terminology regarding Crohn's. If you want to give me some info on it, that's great. What causes motion sickness and can it be cured? Um, it would depend. I mean, there's there's natural variations of motion sickness. Like if you're in a car driving or if you're in a car as a passenger, not driving, and you're reading a book, sometimes that can happen. Um, vitamin uh, – ginger. Ginger is really good at kind of like motion sickness things as well. What actually causes it? I'm not sure exactly. I think it just has to do with a lot of vestibular input from the cerebellum. And then obviously you have eye input, you're moving, just a lot of excessive input to the brain. And I think that's just, you know, just excessive input coming in and it's just um, creating that feeling of nausea. But ginger can help as well to help dampen that. Robert writes in, does a runny nose while eating a certain food mean some type of sensitivity? Possibly. I mean, dairy, especially mucus producing foods, it's very possible. If you see it with butter, every now and then I'll get a little bit with butter. It's not that big of a deal. And I, for me, it's like if that's if it happens every now and then, the nutrients and butter are worth it for me. Some people do better with ghee. Um, potentially, just keep an eye on how much it happens and what the frequency is. Uh, what do you think of GABA for adrenal fatigue? I think GABA is really good because it can help. It's an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it really helps relax and calm down the nervous system. And some people that are in this like stage one adrenal dysfunction where their cortisol is heightened or they just can't come down, they can't relax. That's where GABA can be helpful. Other compounds like L-theanine or even things like ashwagandha can also be helpful too. 
Let me see if I got any questions here on Facebook. Yeah, questions are just too hard to answer here. Facebook is not user friendly for asking for answering questions. Sorry, guys. All right. Um, let me keep on rolling here. Me? No, I'm not sick. I'm actually feeling really good. A few months of break. Is it okay between uh, various killing herbs, delays due to logistics and other stuff? Yep, that's fine. That's totally good. I like a little bit of a, a break to get probiotics in there. I think that's very beneficial. Kitty writes in, your thoughts on testosterone pellets and your butt on women? It depends. I'd want to look at your hormones and see where they're at. I would try to utilize things like DHEA, and I'd work on the estrogen progesterone balance before I... I dove into to testosterone personally. Tobias writes in question. I have EOE. Oh gosh, you got to give me uh, the actual condition. I, I don't have all the acronyms uh, fully memorized. I mean, I know things like IBS, those kind of things, but EOE, no idea. Um, so you have to give me that. Low heat writes in. Thanks, Doc. Uh, also, how about liposomal vitamin C flush for lymph node? Yeah, higher dose vitamin C can also be very good for the lymph too. Vitamin C can help the macrophages, which are the the type of um cells that are inside the lymph that are like little Pac-Man and, and eating all the junk up. Uh, what could be the difference between the two? Need more answer on that. If hormones are helping, we'll just need them from then on. Do the hormone system kick in? Yeah. I mean, if you get the hormones supported and we get the underlying stress that caused the problem to begin with removed and we have good healthy lifestyle and good foods, yeah, ideally you're going to be able to come off um, any of the hormonal support. If you're menopausal, it may be a little bit different because the follicles have all been used up and and you don't quite have the estrogen that was there as a cycling female, so it may depend. Um, Akimo, I think Akbar writes in, I've been off DHEA since four months but have body hair, torso, arm, and leg are not going back to where the levels where they were before. Why is this happening? Way more, I need way more information about that. I have to talk to you in person. Um, Paula Herm writes, is it bad to use antibiotics for H. pylori after multiple rounds of GI clear two and still not eradicated? It depends. So if you're just doing the GI clear two, there may need to be other herbs added along with it and probiotics along with it. We would have to schedule a consult to dive in deeper to figure out exactly what's been done and what hasn't been done and figure out another next step. Um, eosinophilic esophagitis. So regarding that, you got to go type the whole question out again. I can't go back up and read it. John DeCicero writes in Dr. J, any health concerns around eating six ground up apricot kernels a day? No, I mean, there's a lot of benefit. I think there's, um, I think it's vitamin B17, right? What's it called? It's the cancer, it's the anti-cancer one. Um, not atrazine, that's a pesticide. Forget what it is, but basically there's some, there's some cyanide compounds within the apricot seed that are really helpful at, at apoptosis and killing sand and killing cancer. And so that's kind of the benefit with the, um, the apricot seeds, uh, truth about cancer documentary series talks a little about that. Uh, what's for lunch and dinner today. So last night we had an awesome chicken soup with veggies, carrots, onions, and celery. It was really, really good. And even my son ate some, loved it. And it, that was what I had. It was absolutely awesome. Soup's great, especially when like I don't have time to eat because it's pre-digested. You don't really have to chew it, and you can get a nice bowl of soup down in five or ten minutes, and it's pretty easy. Uh, okay, excellent. Yeah, amygdalin. That's it. Yep, yeah, amygdalin. That is it. Vitamin B17, I think, as well. And the cyanide compound in the apricot seed has a way of programming apoptosis, which is um, programmed cell death in the cancer. Very helpful. All right, guys, any last questions, feel free and let me know. I'm going to jump on a patient call. Um, last question, what's the dose of liposomal vitamin C I should begin with? Any side effects or things? Keep note while doing this. I mean, I would say start with a gram. A one gram of vitamin C I think is fine with liposomal. And I would say go up to three grams on that. It really just depends if you're treating something acutely or not. Again, context is everything. The absorption with liposomal is better. So I would go one to three grams I think is totally good. And if it's really acute, you can go high as six if it's, you know, if you have an active infection. Like with my son, I'll give him one gram a day of liposomal vitamin C. And he does great with that. It's just a, you know, it's a nutrient and it can really rev up his immune system. And especially if I know he's going to like a, a playground or like some kind of like playscape, I'll give him some extra immune support 
And we'll typically give him some golden seal and echinacea before and after as well, just to get his immune system revved up. Okay, cool. Um, so acinophilic, acinophilic gastritis or esophagitis, and you reacted to peaches, throat closing, vomiting, thick mucus. Yeah, so regarding that, got to follow the six R's. Got to go on the autoimmune diet to start for sure. Moon Goddess, what can I take for SIBO methane naturally? I am going on a pick line for Lyme and my gut's a mess. Oh, man. Yeah, this is the big problem with a lot of these doctors treating a Lyme. They just tend to use antibiotics for like ever. And if you look at the side effects of the antibiotics, especially long term, they literally mirror the side effects of Lyme. Brain fog, joint pain, fatigue. And then it's this vicious cycle where then the doctor just says, oh, you're just having die off. And it's like, yeah, but you got me on antibiotics for a year and the side effects of the antibiotics mirror the Lyme. How the hell are you ever going to know the difference? You're not. That's the problem. So in my opinion, I always lean to using herbs, at least in the beginning, longer term, because they're going to be safer longer term. You won't have as many side effects. And I would really work on um, all the gut stuff before I even touch the Lyme just because so much of the immune systems in the gut. So my, my theory is work on the stressful places where the immune system is. Get the gut better, get the SIBO, get better, get any of the parasites or yeast overgrowth, get the gut better because that's going to support the immune system. And then if you want to go after the Lyme with more specific herbal compounds, use herbs more long-term. If you want to use antibiotics with some of the Lyme stuff, I just recommend doing it more acutely, not chronically. Use some of the herbs more chronically longer and also add in immune support along with it, such as like medicinal mushrooms, things that actually build back up the immune system as well. Okay, Dusty writes in, I have multiple canker sores and I have had them for three years. I think the Yasmin birth control caused it. Maka made them go away. I stopped taking it not too long ago. I see a lot of cold sores also be a strong sign of gluten sensitivity. So I would really get all the gluten out and you may need to get your hormones looked at and tested. There could be some estrogen dominance that's happening just from being on the birth control pills that could really make that happen. Um, Robert writes, and what's the biggest factor in your life that keeps you healthy? Well, I mean, sleep, I try to get at least seven and a half to eight and a half hours sleep a night, obviously healthy diet, you know, nearly perfect throughout the week. Uh, avoiding the gluten. And then for me, you know, filling in the gaps with supplementation. I mean, just having really good sleep, really good food quality, managing stress, that's kind of the foundation. And then filling in the gap um, supplement wise. Um, let's see here, no idea about the canned peaches. Just cut them out. Could be a histamine issue. Um, let's see here, doctor, is it safe for me to take digestive enzymes and probiotics for long term? Yes, totally fine. Any experience with Nordic Naturals Omega-3 capsules? Yeah, Nordic Naturals is a great brand for fish oil. Really good. Uh, which probiotics will you suggest for SIBO patients? I'll typically do like a Mega Sporbiotic. That's a really good one. Or a Primal Defense Ultra. These are really good probiotics that are more spore-based and don't have um, any of the potential delactate forming strains. Uh, how do I know when I'm done with the GI clear? And that's, we should be chatting. Typically, I only recommend a 60-day supply off the bat. So as long as you took exactly what was prescribed, then you should be good to go. Let me check Facebook here. All right, guys, any last questions, feel free to chime in. I got a patient I have to run to. I'll be back online here on Monday. All right, you guys have a phenomenal weekend. I'm taking off. Take care. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Hit the bell to get the notifications. Install the app on your phone if you want to get the updates. All right, guys, take care. Bye now.